It is, praise God, amen. I've been reading from Acts 18, verse 9 and 10, Acts 18, 9 and 10. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the, in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. Amen. Speaking this morning, and now the Lord spoke. Praise God. Father, we come to you again this morning in this room. You see us all here, O oh God. You see us, O oh God. You know us. My God, your love is very present in this house. I thank you for the songs that were sung and the words that spoke to my heart of that great love that you have for us, God. Not only a great love for us, but, oh God, the harvest of God. Oh, my God, my God, oh God. Touch us, oh God, as a body this morning in this house, in his spirit, oh God, that would attempt to bind your work, God. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God. Thank you again for all that you've done. Amen, amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor and smile, shake their hand. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed is the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. Always a danger when you ask people to shake hands. And we didn't even say engage in conversation. They just did that. That's all right. Uh, it's good to engage people in conversation. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. I recently told those that were here for morning prayer a few weeks back that uh, this portion of Scripture had been uh, something that God had quickened to my heart uh, many, many, many years ago in prayer. One of those portions of Scriptures that just left leaped off the pages of God's word. It was like it was highlighted, very, very much highlighted. And I, I couldn't see anything else that the Bible said other than, amen, verses 9 and 10 of Acts 18. Amen. And, and I realized at that time that God was speaking to me. Hallelujah. But over time, over time, you know, things can happen in our life over time because we don't see necessarily the results that we like to see things get shelved, they get put away, they get buried in, in just what's going on around us. Amen. And it took uh, the message uh, by Brother uh, Robert Teasdale to, to bring it back to the forefront of my mind. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. The, the root knows. If you have you ever seen that message, the root knows. You need to see that message. The root knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or the seed knows. I'm sorry. That's right. You got it. The seed knows. See? Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. I need all the help I can get. Hallelujah. I do need all the help I can get. Amen. Are, are you all in the house this morning? Are you all sort of drifted away already? Amen. Amen. And so, praise God. So I will be coming back to us. In fact, I am. At, I asked Ginger to put this all on one, one uh, screen so that we could see it. Uh, I, I want this to be the very root of what we are this year. Amen. God speaks to us. Hallelujah. He speaks to us. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You know, I just, I'm just going to stop a moment here because we've all settled in now. Let's, let's just give this God's spirit an opportunity to work in each of us right now. Can, can you do that right now? We, 
We're settled in now. Let's let's just give ourselves to the spirit of the living God right now. Can you do that? Do, do you know how to do that today? Hallelujah. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you. Oh. worship you in this house God I worship you in this house Lord praise God 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 let me let me remind us quickly also next Sunday we'll have brother Blackman and sister Blackman with us their missionaries to Africa Guinea they'll be with us uh, next uh, Sunday morning praise God you know, we, we teach that a person must be born again of the water and the spirit. We, we know that the very foundation of that is to believe. Without belief, you cannot please God. And we will tell people they need to repent of their sins. They need to be buried with them in baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and that God has promised to give them the gift of the Holy Ghost. He's promised to do this. I think a lot of times we don't understand necessarily what takes place when God fills us with the Holy Ghost. I don't think it really grabs us. I'm afraid what happens to us over a period of time that we lose sight of what God is doing and in had, had intended to do in us. I really do. I think it's very easy for us as believers to try to operate in the flesh. Very easy for us to do that. Very, very easy for us to live according to a standard of rules. Okay, very easy for us to follow rules and amen. And it's easier to follow rules than, than clean out your heart. Very easier to do that. And, and so we can become very pharisaical in our approach to God. Amen. But you need to understand something. Amen. There is no good thing in our flesh. Let me repeat it to you. There is no good thing in our flesh. Amen. The Bible teaches us that our flesh is carnal. It, it is actually at enmity with God. Amen. It doesn't want God. It doesn't want to serve God. It kicks and scream when you, you say, this is what we're going to do. Hallelujah. This is how we're going to live. Amen. And, it, and so it will fight us, unfortunately, all the days of our life. Paul will tell us in the book of Galatians chapter five, that there is that constant battle between the spirit and the flesh and whatever we yield ourselves to that's what's in control but i haven't necessarily come to talk so much about that as what happens when we're born again there is a work that takes oh god help us i i would that we could get here this morning amen i would that we could get in the house i would that we could get our mind focused on god today i would that somehow we would realize amen the magnitude of what god has done in our life what he's going to continue to do in our life amen when you were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God was not hooking up with your flesh. He was hooking up with your spirit. Hallelujah. Something took place when you were baptized in the spirit. 
Something happened that will no, you'll never, ever be able to forget. Never, ever be able to wipe out of the memory banks of your mind. When God, when God came to you, when God dealt with you, when God filled you with the Holy Ghost. There was a spiritual union that took place at that time. Hallelujah. You were brought into his kingdom. Do you remember when you got the Holy Ghost? Do you remember your enthusiasm? Do you remember how you couldn't wait to tell somebody about what God had done for you? And you begin to tell them you didn't even have all the right words, but you, you still told them. I went to church and, and, and I was praying and God moved on me and I began to say things I'd never said before. Do you remember that union that took place at that time? Something happened in you that cannot be manufactured by any other thing. No man can do it. No technology can do it. Amen. When you were born again of the water in the spirit, there was now a connection that you had. Amen. With God Almighty himself, your spirit communing with his spirit. Amen. Paul would write to the Galatians and he would say to them, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you to think that you begin this thing in the spirit and somehow you're going to finish it in the flesh? Flesh is not going to get the work done. Amen. Your flesh is not interested in the things of God. All right. How do I know that? Well, just don't pray for a few days and don't get in the word of God for a few days and just see what direction you're going to go. Just see what happens to you when you're not in contact and communion with God's spirit. See what you're added to like. See what becomes your priorities. Huh. We have got caught up, it seems, on the goosebumps rather than on what God had done and what God is continuing to do in us. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 17 that we are the body of Christ and each of you is a member individually of that body. How did you get in that body? Verse 13 is not on the, on the notes that I gave you this morning, but we all have been made to drink of that spirit, that same spirit. Amen. That was poured out on the day of Pentecost. We've all been made to drink of that spirit. Hallelujah. It has brought us into a body. It has given us enthusiasm. I can tell you right now, amen, just how you are by what you do. Amen. When you are filled with the spirit, when you are walking in the spirit, you are going to want to do the things of the spirit. The spirit of God is always calling men and women to him. The spirit of God is always in the process of expanding his kingdom. And when we're in the spirit, that becomes our goal. That becomes our desire. That becomes our longing. Because we're part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 You see, amen, when, when our fervency lacks... It's just like a human relationship. When the fervency between a husband and a wife declines, it tells us there's an issue going on. Something is happening. Something is not exactly right. They're not on the same page anymore. His desires are not her desires. Amen. Her desires are not his desires. And as that increases, they get farther and farther apart 
Do you not understand is that's what happens in the Holy Ghost. Amen. When we are not praying, when we are not, amen, seeking God, when we are not flowing in the Holy Ghost, how much, too many times, amen, we try to say all of our words in English, amen, but when God gave us, amen, a heavenly language to speak, amen, and we ought to, we ought to speak in tongues a whole lot more than we do. Some of us are not comfortable doing that. And we battle those areas over and over and over again. Amen. Paul himself would say to the Corinthian church, I speak in tongues more than you all. But that didn't get too far. I am not talking about one of the nine spiritual gifts that you read about in the 12th chapter. I am talking about that communication with the spirit when deep speaks unto deep. Hallelujah. When, when amen, God rises up in you and you begin to flow in an intimacy that, that cannot be, amen, by design, cannot be manufactured up, cannot, amen, be, uh, uh, again, uh, through technology made Amen. Whole. Hallelujah. It comes as we are in the spirit of God. Why is it that John would say in Revelation, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw the Lord. Too many of us are not walking in the spirit and we're not consequently seeing God, nor are we doing what God wants us to do. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Oh God, oh God. Amen. You, 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 don't, you don't understand what spiritually took place when you were born again. You were joined to his spirit. Amen. You were glued to God. Amen. Do, do, do you not understand? Amen. What, what was spoken in Genesis chapter two, that a man was to leave his family and he was to cleave unto his wife. It is the same word. Amen. That is used here. Join, glue, cleave. Amen. Amen. When you become a child of God, you are to cleave to the spirit. Let me let me just back up here. Now, now maybe you know I, I can't speak for America because America's all messed up. But but you know the culture of the Middle East, the desire of a of a brand new wife is to give her husband a son. And the day that she comes to him and says, "I'm pregnant." My, my God, that's a day of celebration. Amen. She's happy. He's happy. And they celebrate. Amen. I can remember when I got married and, and my wife, she was ready to have children and I wasn't ready to have children. Uh, I can tell you, it took me a few years and I reluctantly, amen, went into that issue. Amen. And finally we had a son and we named him Timothy. Amen. Timothy Mark. Hallelujah. We named him. Amen. He became our pride and joy. Amen. But I, I was not, I was reluctant to get involved. You see, I was, I, I'm an American man and I got America's mindset and culture. You know, it's all about let's have fun and games. Let's get everything accomplished now. And then some, you know, when, when we're old fossils, then we'll have kids. <laughs> well, this old fossil, he can't even keep up with his grandkids. I, I remember. I remember when my wife brought forth her son. I remember later that it was I who, who now wanted more children. Amen. She was on the other side of the issue. Amen. And she, 
She wasn't so, but somehow through my my su suave ways, and I was able to convince her to to have. And I had a, we had I I had we had uh, we had Nathan and and Bethany. Hallelujah. Do you not understand that when God brought you into his kingdom, he put in you that natural desire of the spirit to have young? Oh, you, you miss it. I, I just, it tells me how disconnected we are. It tells me right now how disconnected we are as believers. We only speak in tongues when we come to church on Sunday, when we get a little joy going on here and we get, we get into spirit. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, you have union with him and that union needs to take place Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And you need to be cleaving. To the one who loves you. Who you became joined with. Paul would say your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. Everybody say in you. Hallelujah. Whom you have from God. It's in me and it's from God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. My God. We're so wrapped up in our world and trying to get ahead and trying to do what we can do just to survive that we're entirely missing out on what God gave us a long time ago when he filled us with the spirit. And somehow that voice of the spirit has got to get through to us that in this hour we must have children. If we don't have children, we're going to die. I was, I was in a funeral of a denominational church on Thursday and I looked around and there was not one young person outside of the immediate family there. And it told me something. It told me that they're dying. They're dying. They're dying. They're dying as a denomination. Amen. They're all, all the old ones are passing off and, and it's going to be gone. It's, it's, it's lost its purpose. It's lost what God wanted it to do. I'm here to tell you, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, amen, you want to bring forth young. And if you don't want to bring forth young, I'm going to say something to you right now. You're not full of the Holy Ghost. Let me run it by you again. If you don't want to bring young into the kingdom, you're not full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to Paul. I'm talking to you right now. I, I, I'm not talking to the guy that don't know Jesus. I'm talking to you. You that had that experience. You, you that went through the new birth. What happened to you? How did you get away from what God's intent was for you? You were designed to produce young. You were designed to produce young. What happened to you? God's DNA is in you. And that DNA says, let's give birth. Let's give birth. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Amen. The longer you've been in this thing, the more experienced, the more gifted you ought to be. It ought not to be the guy that came to Jesus yesterday and just now discovered there's a book called Genesis. You, you, you don't know all the knowledge that God has given you, all your understanding. Do you really think that God's going to wink at you because it's you sat idle and did absolutely nothing with it? You think he's going to pat you on the back and say, well done thou good and faithful sir. Man, you learned all the books of the Bible. You know what it says in there. I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to say, turn away from me, you who work iniquity. I know you not. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be ugly today. 
But I'm telling you, when God put his spirit in you, he put it there for just more than just getting a little bit of joy on a Sunday. We should, we, we should wake up in the morning and say, okay, okay, Jesus, what are we doing today? Okay. okay this is, there's, an, there's issues going on right now in this place. There's issues going on right now. Well, do, do you remember how it was the week you got married? You remember? All right, all right. You, you, you couldn't get enough of him? And I, I know, I know this is going. And she couldn't get enough of you. <laughs> That's a nervous laugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It's gonna get ugly, my God. Comes now. You don't even care if he comes to the bed. I repeat, once was enough. You don't even care if she ever puts her arms around you again. What's wrong? The relationship has changed. The intimacy is gone. Why is the intimacy gone? Because you got two separate lives now when they used to be one. It's the same way in the spirit. It's the same way in the spirit. How can we be comfortable without and not be involved in trying to reach somebody, trying to help somebody find God, trying to be involved in prayer for somebody, trying to teach somebody a Bible, trying just to shake God, shake somebody's heart. You're getting it now because I already got it. There's a spiritual union that took place to you, in you. Amen. And if you don't have a desire to reach people, I would be extremely concerned about where you're at. You see, it's in that relationship that we desire to please our Lord. Amen. Our lover. Because the Lord Jesus is our lover. We are the bride. The church is the bride. And he's our lover. And when you're in love, there's nothing that they can ask you to do that you won't try to do. Oh, I'm talking to you sophisticated apostolics today. You know, you, you, I already heard it. So who said it? What was you? A peck on the cheek. They ain't cutting it. That's all you want from your man? A peck on the cheek? That's all you want from your woman? A peck on the cheek? Are you, are you content with that, Philip? When she starts doing that, I I'm walking away. I I'm trying to relate to you in terms you understand. It works like this in the spirit. I can understand why that wife may not want to give you amen, lip, lip service. When all she ever gets from you is a frown on your face and a stern look. My God. 
I think that's why it spoke to me so much today when we sang those songs about his love. I couldn't help but return love because of what he's done for me. So, so here we are. I'm telling you, our problem is not another program that we need to get involved in. Our problem was our intimacy with our Savior, our, our Lord, the one that loves us, our lover. That's our problem. Amen. When we get on, when we get on his page and amen, when we love him, you know, when we learn how to please him as, as Paul tells us in the fourth chapter of first Thessalonians, how we ought to walk and how we ought to please the Lord. I read too much in the word of God where it talks about being fruitful. Amen. Why did, why did Rachel say to Jacob, give me child, children, or else I die. And his response to her is, am I God? In other words, what he's saying for you that don't understand, I'm trying, Rachel, I'm trying. I ain't carrying that any farther either. <laughs> Our problem is we ain't trying. Okay, okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. My God, when, when you do counseling for marriage, you, you don't talk a lot about the intimate stuff. You know why? Because they're going to figure it out real quick. <laughs> they really don't need your help. They really don't. All right, all right, just ease off of that. Back up. Get out of that room where you can, son. Get out of that room where you can. So why aren't we producing young? I'll just tell you why. Because we're not being intimate with our lover. have his spirit in me I, w I was in a I was in I had two services yesterday two services brother Franklin one of them they asked me there's only one woman that wants to come this morning do you still want to have service and my answer was yes and Francis came Francis who's battling alcohol has her third DUI God is moved upon that that she says she loves God and I I'm not I'm not I'm not denying her desire even to know God and to love God and that God is working on her but but have you ever sat across from somebody and I simply gave them my or her my my testimony and I watched as tears welled up in her eyes now my testimony is not so moving that it makes tears well up in your eye but, oh, there was something in me at work. The spirit of my lover was just reaching across that table and wrapping its arms around her. Amen. And tears were welling up in her eyes. Why could I do the tears were welling up in my eyes? Because that same one that was reaching across that table was already wrapped around me in love. So I can't be content. I've had people ask me, why do you go to the house of corrections? Why do you go there? Excuse me, but they, they'll say things like, well, you, you know, you know what you're going to get there. You know, you're you're going to get those that they, their lives are messed up. They're not, they can't function in society. Uh, they have broken laws. They've done all these things and blah, 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 blah. And, what what you, what you need to focus on, you know, doctors and lawyers and, and people like that. People that have 
made their life successful. And, and I don't argue with them. I just walk away saying, my God, when did Jesus get selective? When did he get selective? When did he say, I, you can't, uh, you can't, no, you're, no, no way. No. When did he get selective? You see, the emergent church philosophy is to target a certain demographic and to go for them. Well, you know what? You want to know what my demographic is? I got one. I can tell you one word what my, de it's people. 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 Rich or poor. Amen. Young or old. Wise or unwise. Full of sin or, or thinking themselves to, it's just, it's just plain old people. And I was drawn to her on uh, yesterday. I was drawn to her, her spirit, the hunger, the craving for God. And my God, amen, all the spiritual antennas in me are saying to me, this is worth it, son. This is worth it. I said, yeah, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth, amen, excuse me for personal, amen. It's worth walking down a hallway with my, with my hips killing me. It's worth it walking in there and being able to sit down at a table. It's worth it to be involved because I have a lover. His name is Jesus. I have his spirit dwelling in me. And my spirit and his spirit are saying, go for it, son. 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 All right, all right. All right, I'm so, so far off course. That's all right. I don't care. Hallelujah. 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 This psalm says, Psalm 92 and 12 says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of my God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. You see, the spirit of God is not predicated on how old you is. You can be 90 and be fresh in God. And you can flourish in God. If you're sitting out there saying, well, I'm too old and, you know, I'm retired now, or whatever it may be. And, you know, what, what use am I? What are you listening to? That's surely not the voice of your lover. His spirit's not like that. His spirit says, now you got a little bit more time to be involved in my kingdom. Now you got a little bit more time. Amen. You've been, you've had all kinds of experiences that people will want to relate to. Do you remember when you had an experience and you thought you were whacked? And then somebody got up and started testifying of what they went through and you're sitting there, oh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm all right. I really am. My God, my God, you know, there is no retirement in the kingdom of God. Well, let me rephrase it. Our retirement's out of this world. Hallelujah. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. If anybody asks you where I'm going, <laughs> I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord, praise God. Why? Why would we feel like that? Because there's the connection, your spirit and his spirit. You are in union. You are joined together. You are glued to him. You are cleaving to him. Hallelujah. So, if you're concerned about, I got five pages here and I just got off page one. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to use this, but I'm not, you know, in Ephesians chapter 5, it will talk about the relationship between a husband and a wife. 
But it's also talking about the relationship between Jesus and his church or Jesus and his bride. And I am told in here in the 24th verse that the church is subject to Christ. What's it mean to be subject to him? Well, let me just simply put it. If he wants it, I want it. If he doesn't want it, I don't want it. Hallelujah. It tells me in verse 25 that he loves me and he gave himself for me. It tells me in verse 26 that he's in the process of sanctifying me and cleansing me with the washing of the water by his word. And it's washing me. It tells me in verse 30, for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bone. Amen. And verse 31 goes back to Genesis. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined. Everybody say joined. joined. Amen. It's not the same Greek word, but it's their, their cousins. Their cousins. It means, again, to be glued or adhered to. The closest to you becoming one with your husband or your wife is intimacy. And I'm not drawing pictures today. I got kids in the house. And I'm already making them have questions. And you're going to have to answer them. <laughs> And it's out of intimacy that children are born. So let me ask you again. Has your life produced spiritual children? Now I'm going to tell you something. Our bridegroom is not defective. He is very capable of having children. Oh my God. I'm having it. He didn't get his tubes tied. Hey, what's that? Maybe it's because we got ours tied. Maybe we tied ours. Oh, I, I, I can't afford it. It's inconvenient for me to be involved with people and to reach people and to love people. It, it's too expensive to do that. Well, that's, that's the American way. Well, I'm here to tell you that my God can do spiritual surgery on you and he can fix all the problems. He can fix all the problems. <laughs> Why? Because we're, we're joined. We're joined together. In fact, verse 32, he says, this is a great mystery. <laughs> I speak concerning Christ and the church. He says in verse 29, amen, he, he's talking about the bridegroom. He nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Hey, where? oh, there he is back there. And, uh, did, did, uh, this is actually, I'd be careful how I word this. When, did, did you make your wife's brother Antonio do heavy labor when she became pregnant? Okay, well, I'm just sure.
Did, did you take on added responsibilities? Of course you did. Do you think your spiritual bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, your lover, is going to back off of you when you are on your way to produce? He's going to coddle you. He's going to wrap his arms around you. He's going to be involved in what's going on. Because he is excited about you bringing forth children. All right. Now, I've spent a long time in this area. Okay. So... What are you laughing at? <laughs> so, so Paul has a vision. The Lord speaks to him. The very first thing that God says to him is, Do not be afraid, but speak. When, when, when God created Adam and Eve, now if you think that they did not have intimacy until they got outside the garden, I don't know what book you're reading from. We know the results of intimacy in chapter 4. But, but in the garden, there was no fear. Fear always impedes intimacy. And if intimacy is impeded, you will not have children. And the reason Adam and Eve began to fear is because they had sinned. And they were put out of the garden. I don't have time to talk to you about the fact that you know, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is simply overcoming fear. That's all it is. Many people that are fearful have overcome it to do great things. And so I'm telling you as a believer that if you have been using fear as an excuse. Amen. It can be overcome. And the Lord said, do not be afraid, but speak. Speak what? The declarations of our King and our God and our lover. He loves you. It is not the will of God that you keep silent. It is not the will of God that they be, they perish. All right? You ought to have a sense of the lostness of our world. My God. Y'all heard it. I don't have to tell you what happened in Aurora. I don't have to tell you nothing about that mess. But lives have been devastated. That's what sin does. We cannot sit on the sidelines and claim to have relationship with our lover and not be impacted about what we see happening in our world. You guys are doing good today. You're doing good. You guys. Yes, you are. That's right. What is it? Uh, okay, thank you. It's paper. Thank you for helping me out. I better understand. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. How can we as a believer stand on the sideline and watch our world go to hell and do absolutely nothing? I'll tell you again, the problem is you're really not intimate with your lover. You're in a stage of abstinence, and if you stay in that stage, it's not going to get better. All right. All right. 
So do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. I don't have time. Time has got away from me this morning. But, but I could tell you right now, there are multiple times in the Scripture when God spoke to men and women about doing His work. And one of the things you will always hear from the Lord is, For I am with you. He would say it to Moses. He would say it to Joshua. He would say it, amen, in Isaiah. Hallelujah. In Joshua, amen, in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 23. Let me just pause here for a moment. It says, then he inaugurated Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. He is following the leadership of Moses. How do you compete with Moses? He got the law. He'd been on the top of the mountain. I just got to be at the bottom of the mountain. He has spoken as the voice of God. And now I'm going to take Israel in. Don't be fearful. I am with you. He'll say it again in Joshua 1 and 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Do you, do you know? That sounds like it got ripped right out of the New Testament. Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. In other words, we're long past the apostles, ladies and gentlemen. They're all dead. They're all gone. They've all gone to their reward. We're far down the road. But the same God that had spoken to Moses is the same God that is speaking to us today. I am with you. I am with you. My God, my God. I'm with you. I'm with you. Praise God. So it's time to pull the gloves off. It's time to be involved in the kingdom of God. It, you ought not to be just content showing up on Sunday morning. You ought to be involved somehow in getting a Bible study started with somebody, talking to somebody about your relationship with Jesus. You ought to be telling about how God saved you. That's what you ought to be telling them. Be telling them about how hard-headed you were, Brother Ron, working down there as a construction worker and weren't listening to God at all. That's what you ought to tell them, brother. And tell him how he got a hold of your heart. Oh, yes, he did. And he made you a new man. Filled you with the Holy Ghost. He did. He did. He did. Hey, brother, 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 Franklin. Uh, I need to hear your testimony once again. Not this morning. But I love to listen to your testimony. I've heard it. I've heard diversions other people haven't heard. Because every time he tells it, it's like God brings something else to his remembrance. About, man, man. I, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I just, don't you think, don't you, if you think evil against my brother, I'll slap you on the side of the head. But, but he, he told us one time how he was in a crack house and the dealer put a nine millimeter to his head. I was going to pull the trigger. And he said at that moment, I didn't care if he pulled it or not. And the friend of the drug dealer says, hey, we got his money. Just, let's just leave him alone. You really, you know who was speaking to the friend? So I got a plan for that young man. I got a plan for him. You ain't killing him. In fact, the only one that's going to put him out is me, and, you, and you're not me. I'm 
taking him somewhere. Even in his mess, I'm taking him somewhere. Oh, you got a story to tell. You got a story to tell how God reached in your life, gave you his spirit. Hallelujah. How can I? I, I guess I got to come home. I got to just miss everything here. So much good stuff here. I'm sorry. I can't give it to you all. You look like I, you know, I put you through the ringer today and things. And I, you know, we got to get you to the cleaner now. We got to get you to the, to the dryer and get you all dried out. You know, so. 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 So the Lord told Paul that he's with him. And, and then he told them that nobody's going to harm you. They're not going to attack you. They're not going to bring hurt to you. And then he concluded by saying, for I have much people in this city. That's what he said. Well, have you ever read the end of the chapter? You will read in chapter 18 of, of Corinthians that chapter 18 of Acts, excuse me. You will read that he for a year and a half would teach in Corinth. You'll also read that opposition got stirred up against him. And they drug him to the proconsul of Corinth. And they're, want, they're wanting them to take care of him. You ought to read the story. It's quite humorous. They bring Paul and, and, and they start their ranting and raving about how evil this man Paul is. And the Bible said that Paul's about to open his mouth. And the Holy Ghost shut him up. And the proconsul says to all those men that brought him, this ain't nothing to do about evil. It's about your laws. And all your, your traditions. It's not the words he used. And then the Bible says that the people begin to beat Sothenes, the leader of the synagogue. <laughs> and you know what the proconsul did? This is great. He looked the other way. They wanted Paul beat. But God had said, ain't no harm coming to you, son. Ain't no harm coming to you. And those that had brought evil, I mean, God just sort of turned the old tables. You have to read it, man. It's humorous. Okay, maybe it's not him. You had to be there to understand. So here we are today. No, I haven't preached to you about another victory, about your trials that you're in and all that business. But I came to preach to your spirit. The spirit who is in union with the spirit of Jesus. I come to preach to you about regaining that intimacy with him. And then when you regain that intimacy with him, it will be your natural desire in the spirit to reach somebody. Years ago, I had a guy that was coming to this church. I was talking to him when I told him I went out to teach a Bible study in Genoa City. How many know where Genoa City is? That's a fur piece from here. It's it's south of Lake Geneva. And, and this and this guy says to me, "Why would you do that?" Why would you go out that far for somebody? Why? Why would you invest your time and your money to do that? Why? And at, at that time, I was more young in God. 
Now I got an answer, but my answer is, because I been with my master and my Lord and my lover. And he said, son, go do that for me. And I said, all right. I ain't calling God baby. All right, Lord, Jesus, sweet one, I'll do it. If you have to be prompt, pushed, coerced, if somebody makes you do these things, it tells me that you are not intimate with the lover of our soul. If it sounds like what I preached about today is far-fetched and out of it and that I'm a little bit on the ridiculous, I'm telling you right now, you are not as intimate with the Holy One as you thought you were. And we stand this morning in this house. That's the only way I'm going to get done here. My God. I just went to page five just like that. Bang. So what are you going to do? What are you going to be comfortable in doing? I, I know many of us, we need to be fixed. Spiritually, we're limping. I know that. You want the solution? Go find somebody that's limping more than you are. Go find somebody that can't get up. You're at least limping. I'm telling you, when you begin to minister to somebody else and get yourself off of your stinking flesh and all your problems and troubles. Nobody has seen the trouble I've seen. I don't even want to see your trouble. And I'll pray for you, but when I walk out of the room, I ain't fixated on your problems. That's your trouble, not my trouble. Ain't I a kind pastor? I should go and weep and cry and mourn all night long and lose sleep because you can't get your act together? All right, I'm back, I'm back. This man ain't doing it. Unless God wakes me up, I ain't losing sleep over your problems. All right, all right, you're doing so well in And they kept talking. My God. Wanna, if you want to get yourself right, find somebody that needs Jesus. Take them by the hand and say, I want to take you to the one that is fixing me. I want to take you to the one that loves me. I want to take you to the one that has filled me with his spirit and Inside of me keeps speaking to me, keeps loving me. Oh God, oh God. I tell you, if if you did that, you you don't understand. I, I'm not I'm not kidding when I say this. Your problems only get bigger when you focus on your problems. They will become diminished when you get off yourself and start looking all around you at the people who really, really, really. Really got it bad. I just heard of an evangelist that had been with us in the last few years. He now has no legs. And I thought to myself, I, I'm at least on my feet. I got bad hips, but I got legs still, and I can walk around, and he, he has no legs. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, get off yourself. Get off yourself. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you. Because the Lord does speak. And He'll speak to you.